More than seven feet tall, over 500 pounds, bigger than any man, more manlike than any gorilla. Some believe that the legend is an elaborate hoax, but could it all be one of the biggest cover-ups in history? Thousands of people all over the globe have witnessed the Bigfoot phenomenon. My name is Todd Standing, uh, and I'm a Bigfoot researcher. I've had multiple encounters with them. These relic hominoids exist. Obviously, they're very, very closely related to us. They stand upright, they walk upright, they have big flat foots, they use their hands. The U.S. government has quietly acknowledged the species exists. But why hasn't their declaration been more public? Tonight, the truth behind this inexplicable creature. Is he human, animal, or a brand new life form? Join us as we unseal the mystery behind Bigfoot. What if the history you were taught in school was all a lie? Is our government controlled by a secret society? Welcome to the world of conspiracy, where cover-ups, secrets, and hidden agendas all trace back to a single source. We're about to unseal the secret files the government doesn't want you to know about. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. November 1951. British explorer Eric Shipton is on his way to Mount Everest when he comes across a mile-long trail of unusual footprints. Too human to be an animal's, too big to be a man's. It turns out the locals have a name for the source of these tracks. Yeti. At an altitude of 18,000 feet, Shipton's discovery launched the modern era in the legend of Bigfoot. The Shipton footprint was the key to the reemergence of Yeti and Bigfoot in our culture today. In an age where everyone has a video camera, the number of documented Bigfoot sightings has exploded in recent years. I think that there's, you know, probably hundreds of groups all across the continent. I think they're all the way from into Texas and Florida and up through Kentucky, I've seen them into Ohio. We've also had reports from the boreal forests of Canada down the Appalachia region of eastern United States. Canadian Todd Standing claims he's been studying the elusive creature for years. I know they, they live and exist. Uh, it's very important to me that I, I keep them very confidential. But what do we really know about these creatures? Experts have broken down the tapes. Arms longer than a man. An inline step unlike any known monkey. The white soles of the feet. All the details lead to one conclusion. Bigfoot. When we see a Bigfoot walking, they tend to have more of a forward lean. They don't have the full upright posture of modern humans and then their foot placement is, is uh, somewhat different. Bigfoot sightings may be more prevalent than ever, but they're anything but new. The creature has lived in folklore for centuries. In 986 AD, Viking explorer Leif Erikson described encountering wild men creatures in North America. They were horribly ugly, hairy, swarthy, with big black eyes. The creature was already known to North American natives as Sasquatch. I've read Leaves Erikson accounting of the, the, the big primate that actually kind of scared him off. It scared the Vikings away. I wholeheartedly believe that Leif Erikson, uh, he saw Bigfoot. Wherever in the world they are seen, the documented instances show a creature similar in appearance. It was well over eight feet tall, well in excess of 600 pounds. Males probably run on average uh, 
about eight feet in height, very thick through the torso, very heavily muscled limbs. Most encounters with the creature also share another less publicized detail. One thing is an incredible and terrible stench. It's a very unpleasant odor. Rotten meat, human feces, uh, uh, stinking gym clothes. When you smell a Bigfoot, it's because he damn well knows that he is upwind from you and you're getting a whiff. He's extremely aware of that. He's literally telling you, hey buddy, I'm here, be afraid. The long hair, the putrid stench, the oversized footprints. The amazing consistency in the descriptions of this beast point to more than just coincidence. Thousands of people all over the globe have witnessed the Bigfoot phenomenon. If you had thousands of people testifying in a court of law, the judge would always rule in their favor. For those who think these sightings are all the products of overactive imaginations, the U.S. government disagrees. When we return, the startling evidence the authorities don't want you to see. You can't hoax DNA, and they have multiple, multiple samples of DNA at different levels. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. For 1,200 years, humans have been searching for Bigfoot. Skeptics say the grainy photos and blurry videos prove nothing, but the physical evidence is harder to explain away. Unsealed case file, the Pong Bosch relics. Artifacts in Nepal, uncovered by an English newspaper in the 1950s, provide more evidence for the mystery. For six decades, the ridged scalp of an alleged yeti has been displayed at the Pangbosh Monastery, alongside a supposed hand of the beast. The Pangbosh scalp has a ridge of hair that extends all the way to the forehead. No other animal on Earth has that. The Pangbosh uh, skull, cap, and hand seem to offer the most tangible evidence that there was some creature. Scientists and celebrities alike have been fascinated by this mythical beast ever since. Legend has it, film great Jimmy Stewart once smuggled a Yeti hand out of Tibet in a suitcase. I don't think it's legend. I'm pretty sure that Jimmy Stewart did uh, s smuggle an artifact from, that was allegedly from a Yeti out of uh, China. Hair, teeth, bone, and feces of the giant primate have been found worldwide. Yet scientists are still slow to recognize the species. The most physical evidence that we have on the question of the existence of Bigfoot is probably the hair samples. I've got scat, I've got hair, I've got chunks of skin, DNA. Science won't even talk to me. Without a doubt, these creatures exist. The Yeti hair from China was an exact match to samples found in Northern California. And both DNA samples are registering as unclassified species. The bottom line is simply we have these hair samples that defy attribution to known species. They most resemble humans, but they look like wild people who have never had a haircut. Scientists may still deny the reality of Bigfoot, but it appears the U.S. government has acknowledged his existence for a while. There are a couple documents that have been published by the United States military that allude to Bigfoot actually being real. It's even part of the flora and fauna of Washington state, according to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Unsealed case file, Washington Environmental Atlas. The year, 1974. The document, the Washington Environmental Atlas, one of the many creatures in the state's official list of native species, Sasquatch. The Washington Environmental Atlas, there's a lot of men that are in powerful positions that know about the reality of the species. 
That book costs the taxpayers of the state of Washington $200,000 to put out. It includes a map of all known Sasquatch sightings in the region. I'd call that official confirmation. The official government publication also describes Sasquatch hair recovered by the FBI. It is found to belong to no known species of human or animal. While Washington state officials may have tipped their hands, the federal government has consistently silenced any talk of Bigfoot. So back in the 1970s, there was a, an, an airman, and this is the person on the United States Air Force, who actually got a blood sample of Bigfoot. You know what happened? MIBs, men in black, whoever they were, people came in, took the blood sample, told the airman to keep the big fat mouth shut, he never saw it again. If you saw a Bigfoot, what do you do? Call the police? They'll laugh at you. Talk to a wildlife officer? They'll think you're crazy. The whole alleged affair remains classified. If true, why all the secrecy? And what is the government hiding? It could be related to three simple letters. DNA. DNA has been used to differentiate species or subspecies from museum collections of skins and skeletons. But to recognize a new species, there is no precedent for acknowledging a new species on the basis of DNA sequences alone. Oxford University, in conjunction with the Museum of Zoology, is in the midst of doing the largest DNA test in history. Oxford University recently said, look, we want to deal with the Bigfoot legend once and for all. So what they did was they got an open call for blood sex. Bigfoot would be, if it's found, one of the biggest scientific discoveries in the 21st century, let's face it. Evidence supporting the existence of Bigfoot is both plentiful and breathtaking. But experts still disagree over the true nature of the beast. When we return, the mind-blowing theories on the truth about Bigfoot. Is Bigfoot an animal or is Bigfoot a human being? Do we hunt it? Do we eat it? Does it eat us? Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. The evidence that something like a Bigfoot monster exists is overwhelming. And the US government's official silence on the matter is deafening. An eerie coincidence offers an incredible explanation. In just about every Sasquatch and Bigfoot sighting, it's followed by a slew of UFO sightings. It's not just a coincidence. The connection between Bigfoot appearances and UFO sightings is well documented. In fact, the top secret Blue Planet Project lists just such an alien. The Blue Planet Project is a compilation of notes from somebody who had seen some inner workings of the alien and government infrastructure. It literally is the holy grail, the Bible of UFO conspiracy. The Wadig is described as a primitive paraterrestrial with a hair-covered body and a cone-shaped cranium. But if Bigfoot is from another planet, then what is he doing here? Ufologists have three main theories about the Bigfoot phenomenon. One is that they were dropped here by extraterrestrials as part of a research project. Here's another theory, which people talk about, that planet Earth is really a prison planet that long before the coming of human beings, that an alien race took its intervention, took its terrible, terrible creatures that, that, that they thought weren't worthy of survival, brought them to planet Earth, planted them here, and they multiplied and prospered on planet Earth. And the third theory is that the Bigfoot are creatures that escaped experimentation from aliens and are hiding away from us in hopes that we're gonna destroy ourselves and they can take over. There have been several different theories offered for uh, in an effort to explain the origin of, of Sasquatch. 
one theory is more unsettling than most. Unsealed case file, ape-human hybrid. According to some reports, the Russians have been trying to create a hybrid species from ape and human DNA since the 1920s. A Russian geneticist was exiled in 1927 from the Soviet Union because he may have created a hybrid ape man. Our DNAs are so similar. I mean, why not? There are people out there walking around with baboon hearts. You look at how we have evolved as humans, and then you look at a picture of Bigfoot. Who's to say that that could just be an offshoot of where we came from? It's no longer a question of whether or not it exists. With all the genetic data we have, it's just about classifying whether Bigfoot is more human or animal. Human DNA is extremely similar to alleged samples of Bigfoot DNA. So what exactly does that mean? Two experts share a startling conclusion. My working hypothesis is based on the fact that we have a giant primate, a candidate anyway, that's the right size in the right place at the right time in the form of gigantic Pithecus. And that reality of evolution is, this species is called Gigantopithecus, thought to have become extinct approximately 100,000 years ago, and they're not. They're alive and well, living in North America and in China, and probably all through Asia and into Australia, and they've simply evolved. For every Bigfoot believer, there's a Bigfoot debunker. One of the major problems we run into in this field is the hoaxing. It goes on continuously year after year. People send us things that they're just crazy and we have to waste our time on them because we have to make sure they're not real. I think those that aim to try and hoax a sighting or a piece of evidence is a huge detriment to the research to try and find this scientific discovery. As recently as August 2012, a man in a ghillie suit was struck and killed on a Montana highway while trying to convince passing motorists they'd seen a Bigfoot. I prefer people not hoax, but uh, I mean, when I come back with a body, all these arguments about hoaxing, not hoaxing, the reality, not reality, will be done. Everything else is academic. Is Bigfoot a real life monster watching us from the bushes and ready to kill to protect his habitat? Or are the thousands who reported seeing the creature merely confused cranks and attention seekers? The shocking answer when we return. The first words a scientist learns is, I don't know, yet. Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Hair samples are inconclusive. Photo and video evidence is often disputed. If the existence of this creature is to be proven, it's going to take researchers like Todd Standing and Jeff Meldrum to do it. A body has to be found. That's my responsibility as a scientist and other scientists to explore and to determine whether whether new species exist. I will come back, not, not with a little knock on the door with a hair sample. I will come back and I will kick down your working door and I will shove a body in your face. They'll start recognizing this, teaching it in textbooks, but not until that moment. Everything else, it doesn't matter. Until that time, it's up to each of us to decide for ourselves. Bigfoot, myth, or real life monster. Unsealed, Conspiracy Files.